<clears throat> okay, this is the lecture video for Mac 1140 Precalculus, and this is section 5.5 where we're going to be looking at the properties for logarithms. Okay, I'm going to review all the properties first, and then I will refer back to them as we use them in each of the problems. Okay, starting with the very first property you see at the top of the page, the log of 1, any base, is equal to 0. This property states that when the argument, the argument will always be on the same level as log, whereas the base will hang lower. So when the argument matches the base, it is equal to actually whatever the power is. And since the power here is 1, that's why that's equal to 1. They say this in a more general sense down here argument matches the base, then they essentially, it's equal to just whatever the power is. So these like actually cancel each other, take the word log with it. Same thing here. Argument matches the base. These take each other out, take the word log with it. And whatever this power is, what it's equal to. And this just, like I said, says it on a more general, in a more general way. Okay, so now um, this property, what this says is if you have an exponential expression, this is a base ra ra um, raised to an exponent, if that base itself is a log expression having a base of its own, if that base matches this base, then it is equal to the argument. Arguments always level with the word log. Okay, moving on to some theorems down below. These are the product and quotient properties. And you want to take note of when it is written as a single log versus when it is written as two separate logs because they will try to mix up these two on you to see if you understand how the theorem works. Okay, so in the product rule it says the single log, notice that you only see the word log once here, the single log of a product is equal to two individual logs written as a sum. So you can break this product up, and when you break it up into the two individual pieces that used to make up the product, it then becomes a sum, and you're seeing the log more than once. But when it's written as a product, you only see the log once. Same comment about the quotient for a log, the log of a quotient. When you see it written as a quotient, you'll see the log only once. So this is what we call a single log expression. When it's a quotient, it'll, you'll only see the word log once. But when you break it up into individual logs, a quotient becomes a difference. It's always the log of the numerator first, and then after the minus sign is the log of the denominator. Okay, moving on. Sorry about that. Okay, moving on to the next property, we have the power property. And this just states that if you have three levels, base, argument, and exponent, the exponent swings out and becomes the coefficient of the log expression so that the argument can be written with a power of one. This next um, theorem, you will not be using this much. This says, any base to an exponent is equal to e to that same exp exponent times the ln of this base. This is used quite often when you're solving equations, which is going to be more or less in the next section, but they mention it here that if two uh, values that are going to be used for the argument, if those two arguments, two numbers are equal or two expressions are equal, then the log of each of those expressions are also equal. Okay, and then it states it back the other way, that the log, if the log of two expressions are equal, then these arguments must have been equal. So that can be written this way or back the other way. Okay, moving on. Change of base formula used quite often. You'll see us using this quite a bit throughout the problems that we have to uh, do in my, my lab math. This states that if you want to change the base, because actually when you do press things into your calculator, 
your calculator only does log base 10 and natural log base E. You only have two keys and they have specific bases programmed in. So if you're handed a problem where you don't have a base of 10 or a base of E, what this change of base formula does for you is it allows you to take something that doesn't have base of 10 or base of E and rewrite it using actually any base you want. Now if they're telling you to do a calculator problem, you're going to want to rewrite it using a base of 10 or a base of E, but this actually says that if you have a log of some argument, any base, you can rewrite this a, as a quotient. It would be log of the argument, that would be your numerator, and then log of this base would be your denominator. And you can have this, at any. you choose the base. <coughs> You choose the base that's being used here and here. Just make them match. But the formula is log of the argument plays the role of the numerator. Log of the base plays the role of the denominator. And you choose that base of B. Okay, they just call it B. <clears throat> okay, let's go and apply these problems. And as I do the problems... I'll point out to you some of the properties and theorems that are being used. Okay, when we get to the first one right here, um, you're using that very first property giving at, given at the top of the page, which is right here. That's a log of 1. Any base is equal to 0. And you could actually put that in your calculator if you wanted to. But if you apply that property without the calculator, it is equal to 0. Complete the sentence below. Okay, the very net one of the next properties that followed after that was property one. And in property one, it said that if you have an exponential expression, if the base in the exponential expression matches the base in the logarithmic, logarithmic expression, which is actually playing the role of the exponent, if those match, this is equal to the argument. Okay, that was property number one on the previous page. Okay, in this um, problem right here, we are looking at property number two. And that says when the argument matches the base on the log, then whatever the power is, is what this is equal to. So essentially these Cancel, take the word log with it, and the power is what it will be equal to. Okay, then this is the product rule. Remember that when it's written as a product, you're seeing, it, you're seeing a single log, but when it is written as a sum, you're going to see the log more than once. A product becomes a sum, and it'll have the same base, these two individual terms will have the same base as the original when it was in product form. Okay, moving to um, five. So that was property three. It's an example of property three. You're just restating the properties. This is property four, log of a quotient. Okay, when it's a quotient, it'll be a single log, but when you separate it into pieces, the numerator is the first log, and the denominator is this, the log that comes after the minus sign, both having the same base as when it was in quotient form. Okay, moving to 6. This is the power rule. You have a base, an argument, and a power. And this was actually... Let's see, property five. So they're just coming in order here. So this just says you can take the power right here and it becomes the coefficient. So this can be written as R times the log of M, they say. Okay, in this particular problem, you start to 
evaluate things, applying the property as you do so. What you're going to need to do in this particular problem is you're going to have to incorporate the change of base formula. That's what I'm going to try and use here. I'll show you how it can be applied in this problem. Okay, let's review that formula. Change of base formula, and I'm just going to write it up here, just says that, um, I'm going to write it right up here, that the log, let's say you have the log of some argument with a base of A, but you don't want that base. You want to rewrite it in terms of another base because maybe that will help you evaluate or will help you simplify it. So if you want to deconstruct this and assign any base that you want to use rather than the base you were given, it would be log of the argument, that would be your numerator, and then log of the base will play the role of the denominator. And then in that way, you can choose any base you want. That's what the change of base formula says, as long as you make this one match that. So you're deconstructing this, log of m will be the numerator, log of a will be the denominator, and then you assign the base yourself. So you are changing the base, choosing a base that you need to help you simplify the problem. Well, in this problem, I'm seeing that we have, let's take a look at what we have here. <clears throat> okay, we have... Um, log of 8 base 5 and we have log of 9 base 5. So one thing that we could do is we could go like this. We can start with this. We can start with this expression right here. The log of m base 9 can be written like this. Let's deconstruct it using this change of base formula where the log of the argument becomes the numerator and the log of this base becomes the denominator and I'm allowed to select a base that I think is going to be applicable to this problem. Now I have deconstructed this log but I noticed that these have a base of 5 so I'm going to choose that base hoping that this will help me to simplify it. Okay. So all I've done is use the change of base formula here. That's all I've done as I've gone from here to here. I started with this, and I broke it down into log of m, numerator, log of 9, denominator. I chose a base of 5, so I've changed the base. It used to be 9, now it's 5. So this is really equivalent to this. Okay, but what they're stating is that <clears throat> that this, or that this right here is equal to this. So just because I've rewritten it like this, it's still equal to log of m base 9. And they claim log of 9, uh, log of m base 9 is equal to log of 8 over log of 9. So I can rewrite it. And in this way, I can figure out what m is. Because if I compare these two things right here, I can just compare the tops and I can compare the bottoms to figure out what m is. If two fraction, two logarithmic fractions are equal, then the numerators have to be equal and the denominators have to be equal. You can already see the denominators completely match, so we're good there. We have log of 9 base 5, log of 9 base 5. Those match, and therefore these have to also be equal. Otherwise, this fraction could not be equal to that fraction unless that was the case. If the denominators match, these have to match in order for them to be equal. Therefore, since this matches, the 5's match, that m would have to be equal to 8. So by incorporating the change of base formula at the beginning of the problem, I was able to figure out what 8 was. <clears throat> okay, in the next problem it just says 
decide whether the following statement is true or false. Okay, so this says um, that the ln of x minus the ln of 2 is equal to ln of x plus 2 over ln of x plus 5. Let's review that formula where you're going from a quotient into a difference. I had made the comment that when it's in quotient form, you should only see the log, whether it's natural log or LOG, you should only see it once. You should be in single log mode. So I'm going to make that comment right here. This quotient should be a single log, yet it is not. By single log, I mean you should only see this once, but yet you see it twice, which is why this is false. Okay, we'll revisit <clears throat> that property right here. And if you look at this, look at the quotient. When it's in quotient form, you should only see the word log once. When it's split up into a difference, then you'll see it twice. They restated part of this problem incorrectly. <clears throat> Okay, so that is why this is false. Should be single log, should be a single log when in quotient form. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, some of the letters got cut off here, but this is also a true or false question. So let's determine, is this true? And this is supposed to be number nine. I'll have to fix this. True or false for number nine. <clears throat> okay, so here what we have is, looks like they're attempting to use the power formula. And that formula said that if your argument has a power on it, you can bring that power on you can bring that power down to become the coefficient, but the power has to be a power that's assigned to the entire argument, and that is not the case. Like, for instance, what you're seeing here, it is definitely not equal to this, because let's redefine this ourselves the proper way. First of all, you see a product here. So log of 5 times x squared just put a dot right there. Base 8 would be equal to this. This is how you split up a product. Okay, we're in single form, single log form while we're in product form, but when we split it up, it splits up into a sum, and that sum would be log of 5 plus log of x squared. We have split up this product into a sum, both with a base of 8. Notice that that power of 2 only belongs to the argument called x. So if you went even further with this, can't go any further with that piece. It's just log of 5, base 8, but the 2 would only swing out for the portion <clears throat> that has x as its argument. So th this log of 5x squared, this is what it's really equal to, and that is definitely not that. So this one is also false. Okay, so these instructions right here, which got cut off, it just said determine whether it's true or false. This was really supposed to be numbered number nine. Okay, and then in problem number 10, write the following. Uh, this was supposed to say as, I guess I've got to fix a couple things here, as a single logarithm. So we're going to go into single logarithm here. <clears throat> so this is going to be, let's see, we have a, a difference here. That's going to be a quotient. Anything that comes after a minus sign, that belongs in the denominator. Anything that comes after a plus sign belongs in the numerator. So... You know, a little challenging here. You have a mixture of both. <clears throat> so you can re actually rewrite this like this. It might make it easier for you. You can have log of P base A plus 8 times log 
of R base A minus log of Q base A. So these two as a single log, we're going to make this whole thing a single log. This would be a product, but what you're seeing after the minus sign is really part of a quotient. So we're going to have a quotient, but we're going to have a product as part of it. So it's a mixture. Okay, let's write this as a single log, bringing this all together. It's going to be log base A. We're going to form a quotient. These two things belong in the numerator, anything that's positive. So this is going to be log of, now, if they are written as a sum, that means that they used to be a product. So this is going to be P times, and you can swing this 8 right up here and let it be where it used to be before it became the coefficient. Remember, anything that is down in front as a coefficient, when it's in its condensed form as a single log, that means it used to be the exponent. So this would be p times r to the 8 acting as a product. And that's because both of these terms are positive. So they're adding these two things. And when you have two logs that are added, that means they used to be a product. I did an extra little step here, swinging that. It was, I'm trying not to make an extra step out of all of that. And then what comes after the minus sign means that it is part of a quotient. So there is a quotient involved here, and this would be the denominator of the quotient. So a couple things happening there, a product and a quotient. We are writing it as a single log, base A. So all of those have base A. Moving on to number 11. In number 11, um, this has to do with... Let's see, this property right here, which is used quite a bit, can be referred to as the inverse property. And let's see, that property is right here. That when the argument matches the base, the power is what it is equal to. So these basically take each other out, take the word log with it, and that's how you simplify it. That's what you're doing in this problem right here. But I should also first mention that as soon, um, whenever you see natural log, if you don't see a little hanging base there, it is automatically said to be an E. They don't have to write it. You can write it there. But maybe you do want to write it so you can understand that the argument matches the base, and therefore they cancel each other. And what this, the overall value of this is is whatever is in the power position. <clears throat> okay, moving to example 12. We're going to use the properties of logarithms to find the exact value of the expression. <clears throat> and give me one second. Okay, so in this problem, you see that we have a sum, and we've gone over a couple of problems like that already. Right now it's in... Um, it's been separated into two terms, but it is a sum. A sum converts into a product. That's the product rule. But at that point, it will be a single log. Okay, once you go into product form, you're going to form a product of this argument with this argument. 2 times 5. Okay, there's your new single um, argument. The base is 10. Actually carrying out that product, I'm not going to use the parentheses anymore, we have 2 times 5 is 10 for our argument right here, with a base of 10. And therefore we can apply the same property, the inverse property, that we applied here. When the argument matches the base, what the overall value of the log expression is, is what's in the power position. So what's in the power position here? A 1. 10 is the same thing as 10 to the 1. Argument matches the base. They take each other out. Take the word log with it. It is equal to 1. Example 13. Okay, again, we have a product here. We have, let's see. But the problem is we can't put it together as a single log. Because notice that this has a base of 7 and this has a base of 4. So we're going to have to try something creative. 
Um, and whenever I see that the bases are not matching, that's kind of your clue to use the change of base formula. So I think what I'm going to try and do in this particular problem is I'm going to try and use, I'm going to try apply the change of base formula right here. If this doesn't work, you could always try it the other way. You could try and change it. You know, you have to be willing to try some things. When you have ideas that you're considering, you don't know what's going to necessarily work for it. So this will be equal to log of 7 base 4. That's this one right here. Now here I go using the change of base formula. If I'm going to change this from base 7 to some other base, and I'm thinking, hey, I'll probably go base 4. That's probably going to be my choice of base just because this other term has a base of 4 and maybe something will cancel. So when I rewrite this using the change of base formula, you know the formula is log of the argument over log of the base. Log of the argument over log of the base, which is 7. I get to choose a brand new base. And since this piece right here that's mul being multiplied by it has a base of 4, I'm going to go with that selection. And that turns out to be a good choice because you have log of 7 base 4 in the numerator up here because log of 7 base 4 over 1 is the same as, same as log of 7 base 4. So you've got log of 7 base 4 in the numerator and log of 7 base 4 in the denominator. So they cancel, leaving you with just what's in this numerator. Log of 256 base 4. Well, a very popular way of finishing off a problem is to try and use this inverse property where you get the argument to match the base. In that way, you can simplify as much as possible without using a calculator. So if this base is 4, I'm going to try and rewrite this as a power of 4. Hopefully that can be calculated as a base, written as a base of 4, which it can be. 256 is the same thing as 4 to the fourth. So there's my 256. I have a base of 4 and when the argument matches the base on the log, they take each other out, the log with it, and whatever is in the power position, that is equal to the overall value of this log expression. Okay, example 14. Give me a minute. Just a second. Okay, let's move on to example 14. Okay, so let's see. What do we have here? We set, have that in the instructions ln of 2 is equal to a, ln of 11 is equal to b. Use the property of logarithms to write the logarithm in terms of a and b. Well, you could write um, a 22. like this. You can write it as a product. Now you can write the 22 as 2 times 11. That's the same thing as ln of 22. Any single logarithm where there's a product involved can be split up into two terms. And those two terms are joined with a plus sign. A product becomes a sum. And now you're going to have two separate terms. In the directions, it says that ln of 2 is equal to a. So this is equal to a, and it says in the instructions that ln of 11 is equal to b. So you've got to get a little creative here if you want to try and apply these properties in problems that are not so straightforward. Okay, moving on to number 15. In problem number 15, we have the log of x times x plus 7 over x plus 4 to the 6th degree. So we have a single log written as a quotient. There's also a product involved, like another problem that we did, where we had a quotient, but there was a product in the, um, in the numerator. 
So we have a, another problem like this, and it says express, uh, write the expression as a sum and or difference. There's going to be both involved here. Express the powers as factors. So first thing we're going to do is deconstruct this quotient. We want to take, away, take apart the fraction first. Okay, when you're deconstructing a fraction, it is deconstructed as a difference. So it is the log of the top minus the log of the bottom. It's a single log when it's in quotient form, and then you move into multiple terms minus the log of the denominator. Okay, and then you see if there's any other properties you can apply. Well, there are other properties you can apply. Because right here, I have a single log of a product. Well, the single log of a product itself, just this term right here, can be deconstructed into products get deconstructed using plus signs. In other words, they become a sum. So it is the log of this factor plus a log of this factor. So we got two terms from this product, from this single log with a product. There is also a property that can be applied here. This is the log of a argument raised to a power. So the power property can be used here. You can take this power and swing it out front. So this would be minus 6, that minus, then the 6, Right out in front of the log, it becomes this power becomes the coefficient, and then you leave the argument intact. Okay, and I believe that that is all we can do with that problem. Okay, so we've taken everything down. Nothing has a power. We've gotten rid of those powers. Anything that did have a power, which was just this term. Okay, first we deconstructed the quotient. Then we pulled apart the product. Then we brought the power down. That was the very last step. Moving on to number 16. Write the expression as a single logarithm. So this is already deconstructed and you want to bring it back to single logarithm mode. Okay, because you have a plus sign, that means that you are getting ready to condense this. In other words, write it as a single logarithm and it's going to be a product. Okay, so it is. Now you can think of this first. You might want to swing these up first. Anything that's out front, that used to be a power. So you might want to consider it like that first. This would be log of u to the third. If I swing that uh, coefficient of 3 back up here in the power position with a base of 7 plus log of v squared base of 7. Okay, so I, I just brought those powers back up into the position that they were at, in before they became coefficients, and now I'll put together the sum. Okay, going for a single log, a sum, the items used to be a product. So it's v cubed, I mean u cubed times v squared, base 7. Okay, and that's the answer as far as you can go with that. In example 17, this says use the change of base formula, which we've used several times throughout this section, and a calculator to evaluate the logarithm. Well, if you're going to use a calculator, the only kind of base that your calculator has programmed in under the log key is base 10. So you're going to rewrite this using that change of base formula, which says do the log of the argument the argument is this 42. It's straight out in front of the word log. Log of the argument as your numerator, log of this base as your denominator. And then you can choose any base you want. Well, if I'm going to use a calculator, then I'm going to use base 10 because that's what the calculator has to offer. Okay, let me get my calculator. Do a quick little calculation for you.
Okay, so I'm just coming down right here. There's your log key right there next to the 7, and I'm going to press in log of 42. So log of 42, just like that. And then we're dividing by log of 7, divided by log of seven close and I got 1.9207 and then I believe that they're asking you in my math lab although I didn't include that in the instructions here to the thousands place so that would be 1.921 okay oh, this one's a pretty long one um, again, I think the uh, best thing to use here, because you have all these funky bases, is to use change of base formula. And you're going to have to use it repeatedly in this problem. So just demonstrating through all these examples of various things you can do with these properties. You use a lot of the inverse property where the argument matches the base and therefore it's equal to the power and a lot of the change of base formula. So for instance, I'm not going to commit to any specific um, choosing of a base because you can, I could make the bases match if I wanted to, but just use, applying the change of base formula means it's going to be fractions. You're going to have all these fractions like this one can be written log of 12 over log of 2. Okay, I rewrote that one. Now let's rewrite this one. It would be log of 22 over log of 12. And there's a times in between them. Log of 22 over log of 12. So I could commit to a base, but then I could just make these match too. So there's no point in choosing one. Okay, then uh, the third one would be log of 32 over log of 22. So you're repeatedly using the change of base formula. Log of 32 over log of 22. Then the next one after that would be log of 42 over log of 32. Okay, then the next one be log of 52. You see what's happening here? You're getting things that match in the numerator and denominator. So you're going to have a lot of things that are going to cancel. Okay, last one is log of 64 over log of 52. Every time you use a change of base formula, numerator is the log of the argument, denominator is log of the base. So we'll finish off with log of 64 over log of 52. Okay, so in this case, I got that to cancel. Um, let's see, I got log of 22 canceling, log of 32 canceling, log of 42, log of 52. So all that's left is log, oops, is log of 64 all the way down there at the bottom. And then here there's a log of 2. Okay, so let's see. So one thing that I could do here is I can rewrite this log of 64. Like this. I can write the log of 64. Sixty-four um, base two as log. Oops. As log of sixty-four over log of two. Wait, I think I just did the same thing. 
Oh, I could go back the other way. This is That's what I can do for this one. I'm taking you down the same path. So let's back that up a little bit. Get rid of this. And let me move this out a little bit so I can show you that we're, we're just going backwards with the change of base formula. I didn't leave myself enough room here. Okay, so what I had left at this point was log of 64 over log of 2. So think about where this could possibly come from. One place that this could possibly come from if you were applying the change of base formula as we did for each one of these fractions is instead of expanding it using um, two expressions, a numerator and a denominator, you can go back to where it came from. Where could you possibly get log of 64 over log of 2? If you had this, if it had started like this, log of 64 base 2. Because if it had started like this, it would be equivalent to this. So not only can you go from this kind of expression into two separate terms in the form of a quotient, log of the argument in the top, log of the base in the bottom, but you can also go back to its original form. So this and this are equal. Once you realize that this is equivalent to this, you can look at the inverse property to completely finish this problem. This is the same thing as this. Let's see, you have a base of 2, and this can be written, 64 can be written as 2 to the 6th power. So we can apply the inverse property here. When the argument matches the base, they take each other out, taking the log with it, and the overall value of this log expression is what's in the power position. So in the end, I took what was left over, log of 64 over log of 2, and I went back from where it originally came, the, you know, the way it looks before you apply the change of base formula. So I worked backwards on that last step, just being creative and trying to go back to something that could actually be evaluated without a calculator, because you can't put this in a calculator anyway. You don't have keys that will accommodate that. So bring it back to this form and then apply the inverse property. And that's what I did to get the 6. Okay, that concludes section 5.5.